In this video, I'm going to explain what power factor is, how it affects the efficiency of power delivery, and show you how to correct it in a small test circuit. We're going to start with an inductor and a light bulb in series, which we'll collectively refer to as our inductive load. We'll then measure how far out of phase the current and voltage are. I'll then explain why this happens and how it affects power factor and the efficiency of the circuit. I'll then plug our phase difference into this power factor correction calculator, which will calculate the capacitance needed to correct the problem and then add that capacitance across the load. You'll then see how this snaps current and voltage back into phase and solves the problem. By the end of this video, I'll explain how this phenomenon is applicable in the real world and at much larger scales. Before we dive in, just a quick note, this demo is for educational purposes only. I'm showing these concepts on a low voltage test circuit, and it's not meant as instructions for real world power factor correction. Use this information at your own risk and always work safely if you experiment on your own. So what is power factor? It is simply how much of the power that you draw from the supply actually does useful work. It is the ratio of real power to apparent power. In a perfect circuit, like a resistive light bulb, the current and voltage are perfectly in phase, and the power factor is 1.0, or 100% efficient. But when there's an inductive component to the load, things change. Here's our demo circuit, an inductor and a light bulb in series, which again we'll collectively refer to as our inductive load. What's the oscilloscope? The yellow trace is voltage, and the purple trace is current. See how the current is lagging behind the voltage? That's what inductors do. They store energy in their magnetic field and release it later, pushing the current out of sync with the voltage. Over here, this meter is measuring the circuit current, which is about 48 milliamps. This is more current than is needed to power this light bulb, due to the low power factor of this circuit. This is what we are going to fix. And here's how we're going to do that. Let's refer to the power triangle. The bottom side, or the x-axis, is real power, the work the light bulb is doing. The vertical side, or the y-axis, is VARs, or reactive volt amperes, abbreviated as VARs, which is wasted energy sloshing back and forth in the inductor's magnetic field. The hypotenuse is apparent power. This is what your power supply thinks you're using because it is equal to the supply voltage times the current. To straighten out that triangle, we'll add a capacitor in parallel with the load. The capacitor supplies leading reactive power, which cancels out the lagging reactive power of the inductor as shown here. The result is that our load looks more resistive to the source and more efficiently utilizes the power delivered to it. How do we know what size capacitor to use though? On my website there are two calculators. One allows you to enter the initial power factor and the second one the phase angle. However, since we can read the phase angle directly from the oscilloscope, we'll use the second calculator. There is a link to this calculator in the video description below. I'll plug the numbers into the calculator here. Supply voltage, 2.5 volts. Frequency of the supply, 1000 Hz. The measured circuit current is about 48 milliamps. The phase angle, although it is jumping around a little bit, I came up with about 53 degrees lagging. And our target power factor, of course, we want that to be 1.0, which is perfect. So here's the output of our calculator, which indicates that our power factor is 0 0.60, which means we're only using 60% of the power that we're pulling from the supply effectively. It also suggests that based on the underlying calculations that we use a capacitor value of 2.44 microfarads to correct this inefficiency. Now let's slow down and show the process behind that 2.44 microfarad calculation. I'm not going to bore you with formulas, so instead I'll just mark off the steps. If you want to look at the formulas, you can always pause this frame. From the phase angle, we can work out how much of that current is actually doing work and how much is reactive. This is reactive power. Plugging in our numbers, we get 0.16 VAR which is reactive power from the inductor that we need to cancel out with our capacitor. A capacitor's reactive power is this. Rearranging, we get this. Plugging in our known values, we get 2.44 microfarads, which will round off to 2.5 microfarads for our demo. Thus, the capacitor will connect across the load to neutralize that lagging reactive current and bring the power factor up to nearly 1.0. So we'll put that value capacitor in parallel with the load as shown in this schematic. Now let's dial in, so to speak, our suggested but slightly rounded capacitance value with our decade box. Here we go, 2.5 microfarad. And look at that. Our phase angle is pretty close to zero now. The lag between voltage and current is basically gone. Also look at the current. It has dropped down to just about the level that our calculator predicted. Only 60% of the original current is a matter of fact. 
with the same amount of power being delivered to our light bulb. By the way, look for video number 110 on this channel where I run a 4 amp Whirlpool dryer motor on 2.5 amps by correcting its power factor. So by power factor correcting the circuit, all the power delivered to the circuit is now being utilized by the resistive component of this load, i.e. the light bulb, in order to do useful work. So that's power factor correction in action. With just one capacitor, we eliminated wasteful reactive power and lined up voltage and current perfectly. This demonstration was obviously small scale compared to what one may consider to be a practical case for power factor correction. To envision the practical though, one must understand and appreciate both the theory and a working example of this corrective process. In larger systems, this principle is applied to motors, factories, and even whole buildings to save energy and reduce strain on the electrical grid, as the same amount of power can be delivered with significantly less current draw and less resistive line losses by the utility companies. I hope this demo made power factor and passive correction a lot clearer. If you found it useful or interesting, please like the video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.